Hey guys, today let's paint up our MAK Camel cockpit and use some lacquer paints by hand brush for both priming and washes for very, very thin translucent paint coats. Priming was next and first off we'll, we'll prime the interior of the cockpit. The plastic, although it's a little bit difficult to work on and, and focus with its weird swirly swirly gumdrop patterns of metallic silver, it's actually quite useful for this step. Take advantage of the ability of lacquer paints to etch and bond to the surface. So let's use a thin wash of both uh, Mr. Color Flat Black and Propeller Color mixed with self-leveling lacquer thinner. You know, I went for about 60% thinner to paint this time. The mix should be thin enough to be slightly translucent and spread across surfaces easily, but just thick enough to leave the thin paint on the surface to remain behind as our primer coat. It should leave a really nice translucent metallic finish behind, but loses much of that plasticky sheen. It's surprisingly interesting and well worth testing out. Moving quickly, we can cover both the outside and inside of the cockpit bowl and perhaps try adding a little extra modeling like I have here by reactivating a little more of the black paint I have around the outside of my paint dish. Hey, happy accidents are everywhere, right? We can find this kind of win all through our processes and appreciate the different outcomes it produces for us. Once we come back for our main color coats, this should look particularly interesting as a different kind of pre-shading effect. And let's test that out together. Next, after giving this primer coat a little time to dry, I've come back on the inside and applied our main color to the inner planes and details. I'm using RLM 66 Black Gray. It's easily one of the best colors for internals of cockpits for that legit machine and Krieger look. Again, I've ever so slightly over diluted the paint for a wash effect and have quickly sketched it over the internal details to have just that one coat of thickness, yet allow enough of the previous transparent effects to still show through. Yeah, it's a little bit of a juggle, but uh, I'm sure with a little bit of practice, you'll get it. One of the best ways to not disturb that underlayer while we're working is to simply not touch it as possible. One coat and step back. Just get the wash on and move along. It may feel a little bit like you're underpainting here, but rest assured, you're getting it right. Next on to the details. The cockpit will benefit from a little detail so it doesn't look like just a black pit in there. Yes, we could continue using lacquers, but personally I feel they are best for the broad stroke type of painting we've been doing, such as the base colors and primers, but I also enjoy swapping out to the water-based acrylic for this step because they dry nice and flat and that helps the details to stand out a little more against that broad brush type of finish. I also feel it's important to mention that this is a step in tightening up the finish. We can be loose and use the broad brush method is the name I'm going with recently with the lacquers, but at this stage, let's be much more precise and tidy, which again lends itself to the paint medium. Keeping the same colors of basic red and yellow here is satisfying to keep the details matching up with the flight suit. So I've based the fire extinguisher in the same Vallejo flat red and the warning detail underneath. I mean, I want it to be a warning detail because I saw one like on a train the other day like that. And I'm gonna paint that in the same deep yellow. Following Koyokurama Sensei's lead here, we can see that he has highlighted and chipped his camel cockpits uh, I checked two of them for you, before with metallics, which is actually quite unusual for him. So I'm apt to follow, and yeah, I feel it was a good call. I tested out Lead Belcher from Citadel, which is a, a lovely gunmetal kind of color, but it was a little too dark, and I don't feel it offered enough uh, contrast to, um, to to really make it visible and worth the, uh, worth the step. So I changed it up and went with their Runefang Steel color, which looked just right. Uh, I've gone mostly on the edges, especially places where we can imagine the pilot and his equipment uh, scuffing up the cockpit just a little. It adds a great deal of definition to many of the details, and I think the silver will help catch the light a little bit better through the canopy as well. To make sure there was plenty of depth and shadow, I went back to another old favorite, a fast drying water-based one with Nuln Oil. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. It's, it's a really nice little product. Uh, it's great to have in the toolkit, but there is one thing I think we should watch out for is the over thinning of it, uh, especially because we're thinning it with water. It's a little easy to go a bit, a bit too far. You can tell when you've probably over thinned it a little too far because it dries with a very fine light powered powdery residue. 
Depending on your finish, that might be bothersome, but as I wanted to show some interesting lunar regolith details uh, with my concept in, the mi in my mind as well, it actually worked out super well for me. If other spots bother you, you can brush them out with a slightly damp brush, uh, a firm brush too, it's really easy. The depth is looking nice, but often after any kind of wash, will tend to darken surfaces. And the colors will also benefit from brightening up a little bit to help the overall effect. The rest of the interior looked great to me, but it was a little pinpoint details in the fire extinguisher that I felt needed to be revived. Plus, the Vallejo flat red is not quite right for fire engine red, you know, that extinguisher look, so it doesn't read properly. So I decided to pump up the color with a highlight of scarlet red to get it looking right. And yes, I, I felt much happier with it. You know what I mean? The colors sometimes need to read correct for purpose. I couldn't not try painting the cute little screen. So here's my recipe, a quick and smooth base with wow flesh for that retro green look. Then I've based my outline of the target pattern with pale sand. It's a yellowish off-white that covers much better than this next bright laser yellow, which I've glazed over the top to brighten it up and try to make it look like those old green screen curses. Then I've tidied and tried to square off the icons by repainting in thin straight lines with the wall flesh. And then finished it all off with a layer of odd coat gloss. And yep, I feel it works well enough. 1980s screen achieved. I'm really liking this finish on the cockpit, so I think we're ready to move along to the next main body and colors, as well as further test out this modeling pre-shade kind of thing that I'm experimenting with and see how that works for us. This is actually probably a really good moment for me to mention that this camel is going to be one of the featured models in the next release of the official English MAK Books Volume 2. Now you may have heard me say the first official English MAK Book Volume 1 is available to pre-order now on paintonplastic.com and I'm updating our Patreon tiers so that you can receive an automatic pre-order without paying for extra shipping on Volume 2 plus some other new perks. Details to follow shortly. Please also check out the great podcasts I've been on over the past couple of weeks. All details and the books available on my website, paintonplastic.com. Next up, let's move on to the model base layer and camo patterns for the camel. Here's where it'll really start to get exciting. Please mash the like button and subscribe for more, and I'll be back with next steps soon. See you guys.